everybody, in this video we're looking at the different factors that affect enzyme action and therefore affect the rate of a reaction. So first of all, temperature. Um, if we look at our enzyme, remember that our enzyme is a, uh, it's a globular protein and it's held in place by hydrogen bonds and some stronger covalent bonds. And we've also we've got our substrate here. Now, if we start off with a very low temperature, there's going to be zero reaction because there's not enough energy for collisions to take place successfully. In order for a reaction to happen, the substrate has to collide with the, uh, the enzyme with enough energy, with enough kinetic energy, that the collision is successful and the reaction takes place. If we increase the temperature, then that means that both our substrate and our enzyme molecules are moving a bit faster. So when they collide, they collide with more energy, reaction is more likely, and also the collisions are more frequent because the molecules are just moving around faster. If you keep doing that, keep increasing the temperature, you keep increasing the kinetic energy, which means you're just making the molecules move faster and faster, so collisions are more frequent and more likely to be successful. And that goes until you get to the maximum. So this is our optimum temperature, the temperature at which you have a, the highest rate of reaction. OK, the other thing to remember is, of course, that our substrate is moving, but the enzyme molecule is also moving. So if our enzyme molecule is also moving, then it's moving. And as you get to the optimum, it's going to be moving very quickly. And that means that all of the atoms are moving and there's lots of vibrations. And you're going to get to a point where the kinetic energy is so high that some of the bonds start to break. So up until this point, as we've increased our temperature, we've increased the rate of reaction. But the kinetic energy now is so high that if we increase the temperature further, we start to break some hydrogen bonds. Now, if we break this hydrogen bond here, that's going to cause a problem because this hydrogen bond is holding these amino acids together, okay, which is keeping the shape of this section of our protein. So without that hydrogen bond, we see a change in shape in our protein. And therefore, we've also had a change in shape in our active site. Now, that change in shape isn't huge, which means that the substrate molecule is still able to fit um, and the reaction is still going to take place, but it's not going to take place quite as successfully. So our rea rate of reaction is slightly lower than it was at the optimum. If you keep increasing the temperature again, then the kinetic energy is just going to keep increasing and we start to break other bonds. So this bond here will get broken. And that bond is holding this section here together. So without it, we get a much another big change. And we've now had a really big impact on the shape of the active site. So even if the substrate collides with the enzyme at the moment, it's unlikely to result in a successful reaction. So we're decreasing the rate of reaction because the temperature is denaturing the enzymes. The shape of the enzyme is changing and therefore the shape of the active site is changing and is no longer complementary to the substrate. Now, not all enzymes are going to be affected at exactly the same point. So if you increase the temperature past the optimum just a little bit, then some enzymes are going to start to denature, which means that their, their active site may change a little bit. Some enzymes may not. So we've still got quite a high rate of reaction. But as we go further, the effect on the active site is going to get bigger and more enzymes will be affected until all of the enzymes are completely denatured and you have a rate of reaction of zero. Um, the effect on pH is very similar. And again, it's all to do with the effect on the bonds within the enzyme. So pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. So if you have a higher hydrogen ion concentration, you've got more hydrogen ions, it's more positive. If you reduce it, then um, it can, becomes um, less positive. And remember that enzymes have got R groups, um, it, the amino acids have got R groups, which have got positive and negative charges. And they can have an influence on the reaction. So if these amino acids here have got R groups, the positive or negative charges, that can affect how well the reaction takes place. 
um, and it also affects the bonding. So if those bonds are broken, exactly the same thing is going to happen as before. We're going to see a change in shape of the enzyme. So if this is our optimum pH, what we see is that whether you decrease or increase the pH, you're going to get a drop in the rate of reaction. So if we decrease the pH away from the optimum, then the rate of reaction decreases. And if you increase the pH, the rate of reaction decreases. So here is our optimum pH for this enzyme. And you can see that we have a roughly symmetrical curve on either side. Okay, the shape is roughly symmetrical. Different enzymes will have different optimum pHs. So there might be another enzyme which has uh, an optimum pH which is slightly lower. But it still, say she, it still shows that same sort of symmetrical curve about the optimum. And you might have another pH, uh, another enzyme which has an optimum pH which is slightly higher. Okay, let's look now at the effect of enzyme concentration. So if we plot a graph of enzyme concentration against the rate of reaction, um, then we can see uh, what's going on. If we start off, here are our substrates. And we're going to keep the substrate concentration constant. We're just going to change the concentration of enzymes. So to begin with, let's say that we have uh, an enzyme concentration whereby each enzyme is able to combine with a substrate molecule. And there are at, at any one point, so if you just take one point in time, every single enzyme molecule can bind to a substrate. There are no extra substrates which are unable to react, and we've not got no enzymes which are not involved in a reaction. So this is our maximum possible rate of reaction. All of the active sites are filled. When all of the active sites are filled, we have our maximum rate of reaction. So if you moved away from that, if you increased the number of enzymes, so if you increase the enzyme concentration, this extra enzyme cannot increase the rate of reaction because it's empty. There's no, not enough substrate in order for this enzyme uh, to be able to react at the same time as the others. So we can see that we have, although we've increased the enzyme concentration, the rate of reaction stays the same. If we increase the enzyme concentration further, the rate of reaction is going to stay the same because all of the active sites were already filled. So adding more enzymes is not going to make any difference. So after the maximum rate, if you increase enzyme concentration, the rate of reaction stays constant. If we went the other way though, so this is our maximum rate of reaction where all of our active sites are filled. If you reduce the enzyme concentration, then what we've got now is a situation where all the active sites are filled, but we've got substrate which is not involved in the reaction. And that means that we are not at our maximum, we're below our maximum. If we reduce the enzyme concentration further, then we've got an even slower reaction because neither of these substrates are able to be involved. If you think about this in terms of how many substrate molecules can react um, per second, um, let's say at the moment we've got one, two, three can react per second. But if we had an extra enzyme, then four could react per second. So going from four enzymes to only three enzymes, reducing the enzyme concentration has reduced the number of substrate molecules that can react per second, which means we've reduced the rate of reaction. And we can keep doing that until we end up with an enzyme concentration of zero, in which case our rate would of course be zero. So this is the shape of the graph that we expect to see when we increase enzyme concentration. Now, if we just look at that graph slightly, uh, just make it a little bit bigger, then we've got the same graph here, and this is all about limiting factors. So at this point here, an enzyme concentration from the maximum, and then if you keep increase it, increasing it, at this point, the substrate concentration 
is the limiting factor. That means that if you keep increasing the enzyme concentration, the rate of reaction doesn't increase because there's not enough substrate. If at any point along here you were to increase the substrate concentration, then you would see an increase in the rate of reaction. So the only reason, or one of the only reasons, that the enzyme concentration has no effect on the rate of reaction is because your substrate concentration is limiting. However, anywhere below the maximum rate, the enzyme concentration is limiting. Because if you take any points along here, if we take this point here, if you were to increase the enzyme concentration, then the rate of reaction goes up. So the only reason that the enzyme concentration here is not higher is because you haven't given it more enzyme. Okay, the effect of substrate concentration is a very similar concept, but this time we're changing the, substrate, uh, the concentration of the substrate instead of the enzyme. So we're keeping a constant enzyme concentration. Um, and this is more realistic. You would normally have a situation where the, um, the, the number of enzyme molecules stays the same, but the number of substrate molecules changes. Okay, so if we start off here, we can see that at a low substrate concentration, not all of our active sites are occupied. And because of that, we have a fairly low rate of reaction. If we increase our substrate concentration, then we're going to increase the rate of reaction because more of our active sites are occupied until you get to the point you can see here now where all of the active sites are occupied. So this is our maximum rate of reaction. If we increase the substrate concentration after this point, it's going to have no effect on the rate of reaction because all of the active sites are already occupied. Adding more substrate cannot increase the rate of reaction past that point. So we see another straight line, um, a straight part, of the a straight part of the graph. So this is our maximum rate of reaction. And we call our maximum rate of reaction Vmax. And we'll look in a bit more detail about Vmax in another video. Okay, that's all. Thank you.